All right, everyone, welcome back. We're diving deep today into something that could really shake things up globally. U.S.-China trade relations. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're not just talking about more tariffs this time. Right. This is about a report from the USCC, okay. the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission, that lays out a kind of like a roadmap, potentially, mm -hmm. for containing China's economic influence. Yeah, the scope of this report is really interesting. Okay. I mean, it, it goes way beyond the typical trade disputes and gets into like a more strategic approach to dealing with China, almost geopolitical even. So it's not just about protecting American jobs or intellectual property. Well, it is about that, but it's also about something much bigger. It's oh, yeah. about challenging China's entire role in the global economic order, you know? And the report even directly connects this to the CCP's control under Xi Jinping. Mm -hmm. It suggests there's a link between China's internal policies and their actions on the economic front externally. Okay, hold on, before we get too far ahead, let's back up a bit. So what exactly is the USCC and why should we even care what they have to say? Well, the USCC was formed back in 2000, okay. uh, which was a pretty key moment as China was joining the World Trade Organization. Right. And it's an independent U.S. government commission, oh, sure. specifically tasked with keeping tabs on U.S.-China relations, focusing particularly on economic and security issues. So they're not just like a partisan think tank or something? No, not at all. Okay. Their reports actually carry a lot of weight in Washington, hmm. and they're often seen as a sign of potential policy shifts to come. Interesting. Think of them as like a really influential advisory group yeah. helping to shape how the U.S. government approaches China. Got it. So what's in this report that's causing such a stir? Well, the report basically alleges that China has consistently failed to uphold its commitments to the World Trade Organization. Really? We're talking about some serious accusations here. Like what? Intellectual property theft, unfair state subsidies, economic yeah. coercion, you name it. Essentially, it claims China has a pattern of behavior that undermines fair trade practices. It sounds like a pretty harsh accusation. It is. What evidence do they present to back up these claims? The report's actually very detailed. Right. It cites numerous examples of China's actions that uh, allegedly violate WTO rules. Mm. They even compare it to a criminal indictment. Like, they're listing China's crimes within the framework of international trade agreements. Okay, so they're not pulling any punches here. No. Nope. What are they suggesting the U.S. do about it? Well, the report makes several recommendations, okay. some more drastic than others. Oh. One suggestion is to revoke China's permanent normal trade relations status, PNTR for short. Okay, I think I've heard that term before, but for those of us who don't speak trade jargon, what does that actually mean? Sure. So PNTR basically gives a country preferential trade treatment with the U.S. Okay. Revoking it would mean China's trade status would be subject to annual reviews, mm -hmm. which creates a ton of uncertainty and mm. could potentially lead to higher tariffs. So it's a pretty significant step. It is. But is that all? Oh, no, there's more. Really? The report goes a step further. Wait on me. It suggests reducing China's trade status to the same level as, wait for it, North Korea, Cuba, and Russia. Whoa, hold on. <laughs> Are we talking about putting China in the same category as countries under heavy U.S. sanctions? Exactly. Wow. That's, uh, that's a huge departure from how things are now. It is. It sounds like they're signaling a potential shift from economic competition to, like, economic containment. Yeah, I'd say that's a fair assessment. Wow. That's a really big deal. For sure. What would that even look like in practice? Well, to understand the potential impact... Think about the U.S. embargo on Cuba. Okay. It's been in place for decades. Right. It's a full-on economic, commercial, and financial blockade. Wow. Cuban goods are incredibly limited in the U.S., even basic products. So they're talking about basically cutting off China from the U.S. market. Not a complete shutdown, but it would be a massive restriction on trade and financial interactions. So the goal is to use economic leverage to force China to change its behavior. Yeah, you could say that. This is... a. Uh... This is pretty serious stuff. It is. What's the reasoning behind such a drastic move? Well, the report argues that softer measures just haven't worked. Mm. They believe China has consistently taken advantage of the current trade system for its own benefit while disregarding its obligations. So it's about more than just tariffs. Yeah. It's about fundamentally rethinking how the U.S. interacts economically with China. Exactly. Which brings us back to that link you mentioned earlier. Yeah. The CCP's control under Xi Jinping. Right. How does that play into the report's recommendations? 
The report points specifically to Xi Jinping's consolidation of power and China's increasingly assertive actions globally as major causes for concern. Mm. They are suggesting that there's a connection between the CCP's tightening grip on power and China's alleged economic misconduct. So they're saying it's not just about economic policy, it's about the very nature of the Chinese government. That's right. They're challenging the CCP's whole model of state-directed capitalism, mm. which they see as fundamentally incompatible with a fair and open global trading system. Makes sense. Now I have to ask, how is China responding to all of this? Well, we've been looking at a Chinese source that offers some insights into their perspective. Okay. They're framing this as a blatant attempt by the U.S. to contain China's rise. Mm. And they're already hinting at potential retaliation. Like what? Things like halting agricultural imports from the U.S. Oh, wow. They even claim it could result in the loss of 700,000 American jobs. No, they're not just going to take this lying down. Definitely not. They're pushing back against the report's findings and signaling they're ready to fight back. It sounds like things could get really interesting really fast. Yeah, this is far from over. It definitely seems like we might be on the verge of a major shift in U.S.-China relations. It does. But before we jump into the potential fallout, I think we need to zoom out a bit and consider the bigger picture. I agree. We'll be right back after a quick break. We're back and uh, still trying to unpack this potential earthquake in U.S.-China relations. Yeah, this USCC report. I mean, it goes way beyond just trade spats. Right. It's basically a blueprint for like a fundamental shift in how America deals with China. What's important to understand is the context. Okay. This isn't happening out of nowhere. Mm. This report is part of a larger trend we're seeing in Washington. And with that? A growing consensus, I'd say, that China's rise is a direct challenge to the U.S.-led global order. So it's not just about economic competition anymore. It's about global power. Influence, who gets to set the rules, that kind of thing. Exactly. Mm. And the report frames the CCP's actions, especially under Xi Jinping, as deliberately aimed at undermining that order. Okay. It's not just that China's doing things differently, it's that they're doing them in a way that threatens American interests. Which brings us back to that pretty drastic idea. Mm -hmm. Downgrading China's trade status to the same level as North Korea, Cuba, Russia. Right. It's, uh, it's a huge deal. Yeah. It's hard to overstate how big that would be. Yeah. It would be a huge shift. Imagine the Cuban embargo, but applied to a country that's deeply woven into global supply chains. Oh, wow. We could see potential disruptions to everything from electronics manufacturing to, you know, just everyday products. And that Chinese source we mentioned earlier, they seem to think this is all about Trump coming back into power. Mm -hmm. They're claiming that if he wins the election, he'll fully implement everything this report recommends. You're right. Is there any truth to that? Well, it's impossible to predict the future, of yeah. course. Yeah. But it is worth noting that some of the... Uh, tougher stances on China have actually gained bipartisan support in the U.S. Really? It's not just a Republican or Democrat issue anymore, you know? Huh. So there's a feeling across the board that something needs to change in the U.S.-China relationship. Yeah, there's a growing sense of that uh, across the political spectrum. Interesting. So even if Trump doesn't win, this report could still have some serious impact. Absolutely. The ideas it puts forward, this whole framing of China as a systemic threat, Right. Those are already taking root in policy discussions. So it's like they're setting the stage. Yeah. This report is like throwing a rock in a pond, you know. <laughs> the ripples are spreading out. Okay, let's talk about those ripples. Okay. What could happen if the U.S. actually follows through on these recommendations? Well, on the economic front, it could spark a trade war unlike anything we've ever seen. Wow. Remember, China is the world's second largest economy. Right. A major player. A huge trading partner for tons of countries. Yeah. Messing with that relationship would send shockwaves through global markets. Higher prices, supply chain problems, all that. Yep. The whole nine yards. But wouldn't China also get hurt? Oh, for sure. I mean, they rely on the U.S. market too, right? Of course, it wouldn't be one-sided pain. Right. But... China's also betting they can weather the storm better than the U.S. Hmm. Interesting. They've been strategically building up alternative markets, you know, <laughs> strengthening ties with countries in Asia, Africa, Latin America. So they're playing the long game. They are. Wow. And that's what makes this so tricky. Yeah. It's not a simple game of who blinks first. Right. This is about two economic giants going head to head for global dominance. High stakes. Each with their own advantages and weaknesses. OK, that makes sense. The Chinese source also mentioned that this could cost 700,000 American jobs. Right. 
Is that a realistic number, or are they just trying to scare people? Well, it's hard to say for sure. Yeah. Economic predictions are always tough, especially with something this complex. Sure. But there's no doubt that some sectors of the U.S. economy would take a big hit. Which ones? Agriculture, manufacturing, even tech companies that rely on Chinese parts. Hmm. All those could see significant job losses. It sounds like a lose-lose situation, no matter how you look at it. Yeah, it kind of does. Is there any way out of this without major economic pain on both sides? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? It really is. Some people argue that the U.S. needs to take a more pragmatic approach. Okay. Focus on specific problem areas, you know? Give me an example. Like intellectual property theft Correct. or unfair trade practices instead of trying to completely overhaul the entire relationship. So more targeted pressure instead of all-out economic war. Exactly. Hmm. The idea is to address the biggest points of friction without totally decoupling the two economies. That sounds tricky. It is. It's a delicate balancing act. This is all getting pretty tense. Mm -hmm. What are the chances things could escalate beyond just the economic stuff? And that's the biggest worry for sure. Yeah. There's always the risk that economic tensions could spill over into other areas. Like what? Like military competition or, you know, even actual conflict. A new Cold War, but with nukes this time. Yeah, it's a scary thought, and it's one that policymakers on both sides need to consider very seriously. Yeah. The more adversarial the relationship gets, the higher the risk of miscalculations or things spiraling out of control. This all sounds pretty doom and gloom. I know. Is there any hope for a better future between the U.S. and China, one where they can actually cooperate? It's not impossible, but it would take a major shift in thinking from both sides. Okay, what kind of shift? The U.S. needs to accept that China is a rising power with what? its own legitimate interests, mm -hmm. and China needs to show that it's willing to play by the rules of the international system. So finding a way to coexist peacefully, even while they're competing for influence and resources. Exactly. It's about managing the competition so that it benefits both countries and the world. That sounds like a tall order. It is. It'll require a level of maturity and statesmanship that, honestly, we haven't seen much of from either side lately. It sounds like we're at a real crossroads. We are. The decisions made in the next few months and years could have huge consequences for U.S.-China relations and the whole global order. Absolutely. This is a pivotal moment. We're back. And um, the big question is, what happens next? I mean, this USCC report, it's laid out a pretty... Uh, explosive potential path for U.S.-China relations. Yeah. The key takeaway here is that we're not talking about simple trade disagreements anymore. Right. This report, it's about reshaping the whole economic and geopolitical landscape. Hmm. And the stakes are incredibly high. Our Chinese source seems pretty convinced that if Trump wins the upcoming election, he's going to go all in on this report. Mm -hmm. The, the painted picture of like a full-blown economic cold war between the U.S. and China. It's tough to say for certain what any president would do, but this report definitely provides a framework for uh, a much more confrontational approach to China. Right. And as we said, some of these ideas are gaining traction with both parties in Washington. So even if it's not Trump, a future U.S. administration could still use this like as a guide. Oh, absolutely. Mm. This report shows a real change in thinking in the U.S. In what way? A growing sense that China's rise is a serious threat to American interests and the current global order. The Chinese source we've been talking about claims this could cost something like 700,000 American jobs. Yeah. Are they just trying to scare people or is there something to that? Well, you got to remember, economic predictions are complicated. Sure. There's a lot of factors involved. Right. But there's no question that decoupling the U.S. and Chinese economies on a large scale would have serious consequences for both sides. Okay. Some sectors in the U.S. would definitely be hit hard. Yeah. And, yeah, job losses are a real possibility. So even if the U.S. tries to put pressure on China, there's a chance it could backfire economically. There's always that risk, and China knows it. Right. They're not going to just sit back and take whatever the U.S. throws at them. So what are they going to do? They're going to retaliate, most likely. Makes sense. They have their own economic tools they can use. This Chinese source keeps talking about reducing China's trade status to the same level as Cuba. Mm-hmm. They even use this phrase, uh, do, do, yeah, which I think means something like, Trade relations reduced to the same level as Cuba, North Korea, and Russia. That's exactly what it means, yeah. Okay, wow. And it really shows how serious the USCC's proposal is. In what way? It's not just about tariffs or trade agreements. Right. It's about completely changing the relationship, sending a message that the U.S. sees China as an enemy, not just a competitor. 
It's kind of scary, to be honest. Yeah. The whole Cold War thing was a pretty tense time. It was. And the thought of going back to that, especially with a country like China, it's unsettling. I get it, but it's important to remember that the world is a lot different now than it was during the Cold War. How so? China is much more connected to the global economy. Right. Any conflict between the U.S. and China would have huge consequences for everyone. So what's the alternative? Can we avoid this, uh, this collision course without a lot of pain on both sides? There are no easy answers. Yeah. But some experts think the U.S. needs to try a more nuanced approach. What do you mean? Focus on specific issues like intellectual property theft or forced technology transfer instead of trying to, you know, contain China's rise as a whole. So more targeted action instead of a full on economic war. Right. Mm -hmm. The goal is to deal with the worst parts of China's economic behavior without cutting ties completely. It sounds really hard to get that balance right. It is. It's a tough balancing act. What about China? What can they do to, you know, calm things down? China needs to show that they're willing to address the concerns the U.S. and other countries have raised. Okay. They have to prove that they're serious about fair trade practices and respecting international rules. So it's not just on the U.S. to change its approach. No. Both sides have to understand that they have a shared interest in a stable and successful global economy. Hmm. And that means finding ways to cooperate even while they're competing. This all sounds incredibly complex. It is. And a little bit overwhelming, to be honest. I get it. What should our listeners be looking out for in the next few months and years? What are the signs that things are getting better or worse? Well, one thing to pay attention to is the language both sides are using. Okay. Is it getting more aggressive or more conciliatory? Another key thing is the actions they're taking. Like what? Are they adding more tariffs and restrictions, or are they finding ways to work together on things they both care about? So watch their words and and D their actions. Exactly. The relationship between the U.S. and China is one of the most important geopolitical situations in the world today. Yeah, it really is. And it's going to shape the world for decades to come. This has been a really fascinating deep dive. It has. A little sobering, but fascinating. Yeah, sure. We covered a lot, but it feels like we're just scratching the surface of a really complex issue. I agree. And it's an issue that deserves our continued attention and scrutiny. Absolutely. The choices made by leaders in both the U.S. and China will have a huge impact on all of us. Well, on that note, I think we've reached the end of our deep dive for today. Sounds good. This definitely isn't the end of the story, though. Yep. This USCC report, it's laid out a possible roadmap for a whole new era in U.S.-China relations. Yes. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Well, I couldn't agree more. Keep your eyes open, your ears to the ground, and your minds engaged. Yeah, this story is just getting started. Exactly. And we'll be here with you every step of the way, helping you make sense of it all. Absolutely. Thanks for listening, everyone. 